All right, guys, we're getting ready to drop the subframe on this 93 Super Coupe. Um, the idea being so we can show people how to get a subframe down and how it's not super impossible to do. Uh, I just want to take a quick look from the top of the engine bar. I have an OEM brand engine bar. Bought this at AutoZone a few years ago. Holds like 2,500 pounds. Um, so we got it going basically from shock tower to shock tower. This one's got a little extra leg. Gives it a little more stability. You put that on a core support. Um, I have a steel cable around like the alternator bracket. And then I kind of put a ratchet strap around the bottom of the power steering bracket. Just so everyone knows, this is not the only thing I'm using to hold this car up. I'm going to, we're putting this car on the lift. It's going to go up in the air. I'm going to use a tall jack stand to hold up like the transmission. So this is more in our case is, is a secondary hold up uh, system, not the primary hold system. Super coupes are kind of hard to find good places to hang things on because there's a lot of stuff there. We got some belts and things and whatnot. But I want everyone to get an idea. If you're doing a V8 car, you can use a bar like this. You can even use the single bar on the V8s. It's pretty easy to just take a nut and a bolt and a, either a chain or a cable and attach it to some of the studded bolts on the timing cover. I've done that many times, no problem at all. And even if you're doing this on the ground, where you lift the car up as high as you can with your jack and put some tall jack stands under it, you know, you know, never mind the lift. You can do it on the ground. I've done it on the ground numerous times. You can still take your your floor jack once the car is in the air and on jack stands and a piece of wood, and you can hold up the bottom of the transmission to take some of the load off. That way you kind of distribute it so you don't have to worry too much about anything. That way you can work on the subframe or work on an oil pan gasket or whichever thing you want to do under there. Uh, rack and pinion helps sometimes if you really feel like it. Um, but just a quick overview. There's an engine bar. If you have a leg, put it on the course port. You want to get it on, you put it on the fender edges close to the shock towers. Um, that's where the strength is. So um, next up, I'm going to drop the subframe. See you there. Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, we are prepping to lower down a subframe and we're gonna talk about the tools you need. Um, you want a hammer? You got a long 12 inch half, half inch drive extension. I have a 916 socket, um, impact half inch drive, or you need an E18. My E18 is not close to me. We're gonna use a 916 to get off the subframe bolt. I got a 21 millimeter. I have a long 3 8 extension, it's like a 2 footer, 2 and a half footer, with a U-joint, an impact U-joint, and a 13 millimeter. That's for the motor mount bolts. Um, for this car, because it has the steering joint mod on the rack, um, I needed a T25 and a 9-16 so I can loosen up the U-joint for the steering rack. If your car still has the rag joint, all you need is a 10 millimeter, um, but not on this car. That's everything. That's how we're going to get the subframe out. So let's get ready. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going to start by doing a subframe lowering. And we're going to talk about how to just lower the subframe so you can access like the oil pan gasket and motor mounts. Here we go. We're going to start with the lower shock mounts. It's got a 21 millimeter extension. We're going to run it right under the tie rod end. Okay, the bolt comes off. I got to have a little pry bar and a pop up flag bolt. Okay, guys, coming in from this side, um, the shock wants to push down, so it kind of pinches this bolt, makes it a little hard to get off. So I'm just using a little pry bar, going to come in under here, just lift a little on the shock, just a little bit of tension, and then you can just you can wiggle that guy out. There you go. All right, I'm going to keep going on this side. This car has ABS. This is a great example. You need to come in here and just pry the ABS wire out of its little holder. See? That way it can hang. All right? And then we'll walk this way. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Just pry that out. You can do it by hand. You don't even need any tools. And we're going to move on to the shock bolt over here. Same thing, 21 millimeter. Go under the shock or under the tie rod end. That. Cut. 
All right, we're going to take the bolt off on this side. The same thing, we're going to pry a little bit, put a little tension under the shock. There we go. Okay. Now, before we drop the subframe, we got to undo the steering shaft. So we're going to come in there. Now, remember, this one's modded. Doesn't have the stock uh, rag joint, so I got to loosen up the set screw. Grab my little T25, back that guy out. Okay, get this out of the way. Grab a little pry bar. And push up, and it's loose. That's it. All right, guys, now the next thing to do is take out the bolts that hold that are horizontal to hold the motor mounts in. I'm going to take a long extension with a 13 millimeter and a U-joint on there. I'm going to get way back there. See it up there? See, it's all hiding there. I'm going to hit that with my big gun. Get a little slip there. And it's out. All right, guys, now we got to get the driver's side motor mount bolt, which is a little bit tougher. It, this is a super coupe. Uh, it's back there. Um, even on the V8 cars, this is a little annoying to get to. Um, on a V8 car, you would take out the oil filter for sure to get at this. Sorry, this one's got a little bit of a hose in there, so we got a little bit of playing around to do here. But this is real. We're doing it. All right, we uh, had to move a little bit just to get on it, but we're on it. You had to push that hose up that's a bump kind of in front of the mount. Okay, so that's loose. Tool out. We'll get it. There we go. There's a bolt. All right, guys. Now we're going to take out the eight subframe bolts. I got the 916 on a long extension so I can reach down. And you will see they start up here. I'm going to come in and get one. These are E18s, but. One. Two. side you start on this side on the front one Oops, two three And four, now the subframe is loose. So here we go. Now all we got to do is I have the subframe because I'm under a lift. I have it on a transmission jack. If you're doing this in your driveway or your garage, which you can, you want to have a jack under there, a piece of wood or something to hold it in the middle, balance it between the front and the back, makes it a little bit more manageable. Remember, we have power steering lines that in most cases are sort of attached with a bunch of eight millimeter screws um, this one doesn't have any right now. If you're doing a V8 car, there's two or three of them, and you got to take those out. But when you start this part of the process, go slow and have a look. Watch what you're doing just to make sure there isn't anything attached to anything so you don't wreck an ABS wire or maybe there's a wire attached in there. And definitely the power steering lines um, will get in the way if you don't detach their attaching. So here we go.
hang on this one uh, at the moment the mount on the driver's side is just kind of hanging or hanging up it's pinched a little bit so i'm just going to reach under here with if you want to take shoot over here it's just hanging there a little bit up oh, okay i just remembered something this is a super coupe there is a third 13 millimeter bolt right up there v8 cars don't have that and i took that for granted so give me a second i'm gonna go get a tool in. All right, now we're back on the mount. We got a tool there. There's the 13 millimeter. You won't run into this on V8 cars. This is super coupe only. Okay, right, so let me grab that bolt. Take that out of the way. All right, now we can lower it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about here, right here. There's an eight millimeter. See, kind of even overlooked it myself. Give me one second. Let me cut. You know, do an oil pan gas. You can just screw your bolt back in there so you don't have to go looking for it later. Um, this will give you an idea of how much room suddenly appears. So there's your, this is the power steering pressure line. There is a power steering return line. There we go. There's our motor mounts over here and there. And there's a lot of room. And we, let's, let me adjust this. This will come down a little bit more. So there we go. Now, now it's supported by the trans jack. This is a lot of room. Now, if you were coming in to do motor mounts or do an oil pan, this is plenty of room. This is what you need. So like you can come in here and you could come in with an extension and some impacts or even by hand. Um, and you could take out the motor mount brackets. Um, that's the only way I do Thunderbirds and Cougars. I take the brackets off the block and bring those down. And then I mount the mounts on the brackets on the ground. Same thing for both sides. Don't go wasting your time trying to do this in the car. There's no reason. Just take the bracket off, mount the mounts, and dismount them. You'll be fine. But as you can see, plenty of room here. Like this car, I did the oil pan gasket last year, and this is how I did it, just like you see. Um, and it was no problem to do just what we did, get that pan out of there and replace it. No problem. Same thing with the V8 car. Um, that's really all it takes. And you can do this in your garage or your driveway. You don't really have to be afraid of it. You just need to be able to hold the motor up a little bit and support it. Like I said, in the beginning, we showed you the engine bar. Uh, on this one, I have the big tall jack stand under the transmission with a piece of wood. Um, but like I said, you can do that with a floor jack, a couple of blocks of wood. Be you know, creative and safe. Be safe. Don't do anything dumb. Don't use cinder blocks. Um, but that's enough room to do motor mounts and oil pan and other kinds of work some people if you don't like the rack and pinion you can do this to replace the rack and pinion it's not really necessary but you can and it you know makes it a little bit easier if you feel like it um, i appreciate you watching this portion the next part is going to be the complete subframe removal there's more work to that it's coming right up thanks